cognitive explanations of schizophrenia and this fits under the broad term of psychological explanations of schizophrenia. So cognitive explanations believe that abnormalities in the cognitive function are a key factor in the development of schizophrenia. So people with schizophrenia have dysfunctional thought processes which has led to them having schizophrenia. So in terms of explaining um, hallucinations, the cognitive explanation or the cognitive approach believes they happen because a person attributes a self-generated auditory noise or a sound to an external source. So it's a sound that they have produced themselves, but they attribute it to an external source, so outside of themselves. And the voice's experience is coming from an external source because the person doesn't check its actual source. So they have faulty thought processes in where that hallucination, that sound, that auditory noise has come from, which has led to the development of them perceiving it as a hallucination. The cognitive explanation believes that delusions happen because the individual with schizophrenia um, relates an irrelevant information to themselves and makes a false conclusion about it. So they interpret irrelevant events such as a muffled voice or flashes of light as relating to themselves or criticism of themselves and they are unwilling to consider that they may be wrong in that interpretation or to look towards more realistic explanations. So this is impaired insight, they're not thinking about where that um, whether that voice was talking to them, whether that flash of light was relevant towards them. So they aren't looking for alternatives. They believe that it does relate to themselves. If we were to look at some evaluation then, that a strength is that is positive symptoms can be explained in terms of faulty cognition. So schizophrenics with positive symptoms show biases in information processing. Um, whereas schizophrenics with negative symptoms display dysfunctional thought, um, thought processes such as having low expectations of pleasure. This strengthens the assumptions because the theory as it offers a comprehensive explanation of schizophrenia. Um, however, it ignores biological factors such as genetics, so therefore it is oversimplistic and might not be the sole cause of schizophrenia. So it doesn't take into account any biological innate factors such as um, dopamine levels or neural, neural correlates. Therefore, it is environmentally reductionist. It is only focusing on the nurture side of the nature-nurture debate, which means maybe an interactionist point might be more beneficial to explain the development of schizophrenia. However, it is useful. It has um, led to treatments based on um, the cognitive approach, so in particular cognitive behavioural therapy, which has been found to be effective in treating um, individuals with schizophrenia. So a review of 20 controlled trials of CBT found um, that it did reduce the symptoms, in particular the positive symptoms of schizophrenia and therefore it suggested that the therapy is effective and appropriate treatment because it's based on a valid explanation. Equally, it was found to be more effective in reducing symptoms in relation to drug treatments and improved social functioning. So the fact that we have a effective treatment would suggest that the explanation is correct. It supports the idea that faulty thought processes are the cause of schizophrenia because we are successful in treating it. So if treatment tries to change those faulty thought processes and is effective, suggests we have a valid explanation. Now, a problem is it doesn't offer a full explanation of schizophrenia. It only explains the positive symptoms such as delusions of schizophrenia and hallucinations. It can't fully explain the negative symptoms such as speech poverty or abolition. Now that weakens the approach as it fails to fully explain the causes of schizophrenia, implying the assumptions of the approach are not representative and valid, and therefore maybe we need to take an interactionist viewpoint and look at other explanations, not just the cognitive explanation. In terms of testing it, we have issues surrounding causality and a causal relationship. So cause and effect can't be established. We don't know 
whether faulty thought processes are actually a symptom of having schizophrenia and a consequence of a person developing schizophrenia rather than the cause of schizophrenia itself. Just because there's a link between the two doesn't mean we can safely say that it has led to the development of schizophrenia. So in terms of an evaluation point then, or an essay question, outline and evaluate one or more psychological explanation of schizophrenia for 16 marks. So you can go down the route of just talking about um, the cognitive explanation by itself, or you can go down the route of talking about psych um, both psychological explanations, so both the cognitive and family dysfunction for 16 marks. It's up to you which you prefer to do. It might be obviously if you do um, both of them you're going to have to go into less detail about each. If you were to do one then you'd go into more detail. It's that breadth and depth trade-off. As long as you make sure that you have sufficient detail and you um, have that split between AO1 and AO3 and you're spending longer on the AO3, the evaluation, than the outline, then you will have a essay that will allow you to achieve that top um, top bound marks. In terms of evaluation, try to make sure you um, expand on your points, provide evidence, include key figures if you can, don't necessarily worry about the names of researchers in terms of supporting contradictory evidence, and link it back, say what that um, summary means, why does that strengthen, why does it weaken the explanation. If you can include a counter argument in regards to um, whether that's sub so you might have supporting evidence but there's issues surrounding the testability and the methodology that has been used or if we can include some issues and debates so whether it's reductionist and um, or oversimplistic so you're demonstrating to the examiner that you have that synoptic view of psychology you're able to relate other topics to um, schizophrenia